Flutter has definitely earned its spot as one of the best cross-platform frameworks at the moment. But as we head into 2025, is it still the best pick? Let's dive into Flutter's popularity as well as the potential roadmap. Yeah. Flutter's popularity is undeniable. A few weeks ago, we had the Flutter in production event, and there the Googlers gave some nice insights as to how popular Flutter actually is. Did you know that we have over a million developers actively using Flutter each month? And get this, 28% of the new apps uploaded to the iOS App Store are Flutter apps. Crazy chunk of the market, right? So what I tend to do every year is just have a look at the popularity of Flutter uh, by checking out the uh, stars on GitHub. Uh, that way I can at least have a feel of what the developers uh, well like. Um, and as you can see at the chart, uh, I compared some other cross-platform frameworks that I think are either popular at the moment or well will be a possible contender in the in the near future. Uh, so as you can see, React Native uh, is there as one of the uh, the most popular ones, of course, uh, but Flutter takes the top spot um, by a mile, actually. They're almost at 170k stars at the moment, uh, but you do see like a drop off and uh, it's, it's, I think at the moment, growing as fast as uh, the popularity of React Native is. I also included Maui. Uh, Xamarin Forms was discontinued 1st of May last year, uh, so 2024, um, and Maui is, uh, well, Yet another try of Microsoft to uh, get into the cross-platform uh, ecosystem. Yeah, and I also included Compose Multiplatform, which I think together with Kotlin Multiplatform is definitely a good contender in the near future for, uh, for uh, other frameworks like React Native and, uh, and Flutter, of course. So even though on the chart you can see that Flutter is definitely a very popular solution if you look at, well, developers on, uh, on GitHub, um, but I do have to say that, uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of bigger companies that are just tied to the React Native framework uh, solely because React Native had a head start and, uh, well, they chose to go into cross-platform development because of that and now don't want to rebuild their whole uh, app once again because, yeah, in a few years, maybe uh, there's a new kid on the block once again and, yeah, you have to rebuild again and yeah, you keep going through that cycle. So I can imagine that they don't always want to uh, rebuild, but I think all in all, it's it's a very good sign that bigger apps like Headspace or bigger companies also like LG um, are, well, getting into the Flutter ecosystem, want to contribute and uh, yeah, just really uh, show that Flutter is, is a good option when it comes to cross-platform development. So uh, yeah, definitely good signs there. So 2025 really marks the start of Flutter's production era, as they call it. A very robust and production-ready framework, which doesn't necessarily mean that Flutter wasn't robust or production-ready before, but I personally also feel like at this moment and definitely with the release of Flutter 3.27, uh, they just uh, yeah, came to a point where everything felt more robust and production ready as opposed to them still, well, uh, figuring out some things and, and yeah, it, we're now at a point where we can definitely say the framework is mature, let's move on from here. So one thing that really shows that is the recommendation by Google to make use of the MVVM architecture. If you look at the Flutter documentation or the tutorials, for example, you'll often see the use of MVVM. Google does explicitly mention that it's not necessarily the way. You could still make use of Riverpod, Redux, Block, or whatever architecture you like. But I do think it's nice that they went with MVVM uh, also because it's a very well-known architecture within mobile, deve uh, mobile development. So if you look at native Android development or native iOS development, you'll often see that uh, those projects also make use of MVVM. Now, if you look at the documentation, then uh, yeah, you see uh, Google goes for a cleanish approach where you have the MVVM architecture together with a repository pattern. And in between, uh, you have an optional domain layer, uh, which I think always depends on things like, uh, well, the client, the size of the app and other parameters that, that 
uh, come to show. But yeah, I think overall, uh, good thing by google i think it's it's very nice for new developers but also existing developers to have a bit of guidance on how to actually create a, a good maintainable scalable app and if you want to see how to make use of the mvvm architecture in a flutter project just have a look at my upcoming video because uh, i'll be covering that next shameless plug sorry on top of that especially when you look at the robustness of the framework I think it's a very good thing that uh, on mobile apps, we now by default make use of the Impeller rendering engine. Uh, so uh, also for Android, starting with uh, Flutter 3.27, we now by default make use of the new Impeller engine as opposed to uh, the Skia engine, uh, which is a huge performance gain. So uh, very good stuff there and it makes things way more robust. And what you can also really see is that Flutter is now really getting up to date with, uh, well, the latest things also for native. Uh, so for example, uh, making use of Kotlin DSL to build your Android apps. Uh, native Android developers already had this for quite a while, but now uh, all the, the build configuration is written in Kotlin as opposed to uh, Groovy before, which makes things just way more readable and, uh, well, easier to, um, to develop in. And on the iOS side, uh, we have uh, support for Swift Package Manager now, which is a very good thing. Um, it's not official yet. They're still ironing out the kinks, but it's already there. And uh, well, packages can convert to it. And uh, yeah, that definitely makes, uh, makes things way easier by not having to depend on Ruby and CocoaPods, for example. So yeah, the, the road ahead uh, looks very promising. Uh, we got a few uh, glimpses of things that uh, the Flutter team is, well, thinking about or already started working on. Um, they also mentioned that it's, it's not set in stone that uh, this will be how it is um, and things are likely to change. Uh, but it's good that we get like a, a glimpse of uh, what 2025 or, uh, well, the time after that can, can bring. So one of the things that I saw was the live widget previewer. Um, I still remember this from my, my Android days, uh, where you were coding your U UI and uh, on the side you would see a live preview of uh, the UI code that you were uh, writing. And uh, yeah, the Flutter team is now working on the same thing. And um, also, uh, you are able to interact with the live preview, which means that you don't necessarily have to write code to make UI, but you can also, well, click around, maybe drag and drop, uh, for example, to create UI. So yeah, should make life easier, uh, but I do have to say that uh, in my Android days that, that well, uh, live editing uh, wasn't really working that well. So uh, very curious to see uh, how that will uh, pan out for sure. Yeah, another very cool thing that I saw was uh, the native interoperability. And now you might think, oh, we already had that and we can uh, take native SDKs, write our bridge using a platform channel and then we can interact with it. Um, but what the Flutter team is now thinking about is to get rid of all the boilerplate and just make use of the native SDKs straight away. This means that uh, now you can, or well, not now, but if they manage to do it, uh, you can just take a native SDK, um, import it in your Dart file, and then call the API straight away instead of you having to write the whole bridge. And uh, yeah, I think the, the cool thing here is, uh, first of all, it's a per performance improvement, uh, definitely. There's no more need for serialization and uh, there's no more thread hopping. So at this moment, uh, your Flutter app is running in a thread, but when you interact with a native SDK, that native SDK will run in another thread, uh, meaning you would have to, well, hop threads. And um, with this solution, if they manage to make it work, then it will all run in the same thread. But apart from that, I think the, 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 the thing I'm most excited about is the fact that if they manage to get this to work, it will open up a whole ecosystem of SDKs that you couldn't or, well, was harder to make use of before. Um, I see a lot of third parties uh, that have a native Android and iOS SDKs. Maybe they have a React Native SDK because, well, React Native has been around for quite a bit longer than, than Flutter has. But there's no Flutter SDK. So 
If they get this to work, you can just grab the Android SDK or grab the iOS SDK and yeah, call it from your Flutter code straight away. No bridges, nothing, which is a very good thing. So I'm very excited about this feature. Um, but yeah, just uh, fingers crossed that they can make this work one way or another. So some other potential language features that we saw, uh, decorators is one of them. Uh, this basically means that you can apply styling to your widget in uh, another way. So instead, for example, if you want to center your widget, normally you would wrap your widget in a center. Um, but with decorators, you can actually call center as a function on your uh, widget to center it. I think if you make use of packages such as uh, Flutter Animate, uh, the syntax would look familiar. Um, they did mention that they wouldn't deprecate uh, the way as it is now, which means that you can apply styling to your widgets in the old way, but also with decorators, so multiple ways. Not really a fan of that per se, but yeah, let's see how things work out and uh, if this uh, gets in the framework in the first place, of course. Some other uh, minor things that we saw, enum shorthands, not too excited about it. I uh, think it makes it a bit more readable, but at the same time, yeah, I don't really feel like, um, like it's that bad at the moment. And we saw primary constructors, which I do think is, uh, is quite nice. Uh, less code to write, more explicit. Um, yeah, I liked it. So I do hope that that will uh, make it in uh, this year. And last but not least, uh, yeah, they're also working for Impeller uh, for desktop, uh, of course. They want to roll out Impeller everywhere, basically. And I saw in the Q&A of Flutter in production that they were also experimenting at least uh, with, the, uh, with Impeller on web. So I also want to have a look at the Dart programming language because it's closely tied to Flutter development, of course. And one of the things uh, that I'm pretty sure we'll be expecting early 2025 is Dart macro support. We already got an early preview of that uh, last year. Uh, so if you switch to the Flutter master channel, you can already make use of macros. Um, but um, yeah, as their website also states, uh, they're expecting it to release early 2025. Now, if you don't know what a macro is, you're probably familiar with code generation using Build Runner. You write your class, you run Build Runner, and then another class uh, gets created. Uh, now with uh, macros, uh, this is all real time. So it's way less error prone because it's always in sync. Um, we've probably all been there that, well, you make a change to a certain class, you forget to run code generation, and then those files are out of sync and yeah, everything gets broken. It's not good. Uh, with macros, you just get the feedback real time and everything will stay in sync uh, all the way and that's pretty much it if you ask me flutter is a very good pick in 2025 popularity is still rising we're really working with a robust stable and production ready framework right now and the improvements just don't stop as you could see so if you also think flutter is a great pick then don't forget to like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Cheers. Yeah.